Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK and around the world. Welcome to my channel. If you like it, subscribe, share and like. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about um, this video. Well, I'm going to have to go out of my um, normal um, positioning. I, th I, I can't think of any other way. Well, my normal identity then. Um, because this is about legalizing the word bombaclad. Okay, it's apparently spice popcorn bounty killer. They want the word legalized. They don't see why they should have to pay a fine or do imprisonment for using the term in their music. And it profanities are considered a crime. So they're asking for it to be um, legalized based on the fact that there is a nightclub in Belgium called Bombaclart. And so Spice has gone there and she's kind of done a video on it. And, you know, she repeats the word quite often. The thing is, is that I'm sure that those people in Belgium did not know that a bombaclart was a sanitary towel and a soil sanitary towel at that. I mean, they're saying that the word bombaclart is traditional. It goes back in history. It's they admit that it's a sanitary towel, but when they speak it, they're not talking about it in that context. They're using it to cuss. And if the word was OK and if it could be legalized, why do people find it offensive? It causes people to kill. It causes people to maim and it causes a lot of offense, even by those same ones who are using it. When you say, I'm on my I move your bomb, this or that, it's offensive. So why would you want to legalize it? Now, what they're saying is, is that, you know, the tourist people, they're jumping on the bandwagon and everything that Jamaica has, they're taking it away and making money from it. But the fact that they're taking it away, you've had it all these years and it was never precious because you're used to it as a part of your culture. Now, all of a sudden, somebody else has seen beauty in an element of your language. It's not even beauty because I don't even think they know what they're, what, what they're doing. But they've seen a part of your culture, like they see the reggae music, like they see the colours, like they see everything to do with Jamaica. And they run with it because they have the money and they have the imagination and they have the business acumen. So they run off with it. And you think that by legalising the word bombaclat, it's going to make a difference? It's not going to make a difference. Nobody has a monopoly on the word. And Andrew Holness would be, it'd be remiss of him to legalise that word because we still have many generations still alive who would find that word offensive. I find it offensive. I sometimes think, haven't they got any other words that they can use instead of that? Why do they have to keep referring to underneath a woman? All their curse words seem to relate to underneath a woman. And yet the females are in the, you know, in the dance hall, some of them, opening up their legs, having men put money down there, having men sim simulate sex on them. And it's like debauchery. I mean, it's going to the point when you start legalizing curse words. I mean, even in the English culture, we used to have the F word and you couldn't say it. You still can't say it in certain establishments in workplaces. But on the TV now, it's a common, you hear it commonly. And then they wonder why children use the word. It shouldn't be common usage, but it is. And it's got to the point where it's almost normal. Well, it is normal. People say the F words, very, very few people shudder nowadays. That's what's going to happen with maybe the BC word. Every now and then, you know, you hear it often enough. It's not going to come like nothing. It's going to be like water off a duck's back. But you still have generations of people who find it offensive and who are traumatized by words like that. They just see it as total disrespect. So I don't see the point personally why it should be legalized you know if it's a cultural thing yes and embrace your culture but you know i don't think that it's necessary even to legalize it 
if you're saying legalizing it just so you can use it in, in music, music, if you want it to go worldwide, it's still going to have to be edited. You're still going to have radio edit copies because you don't know who that music is going out to and who it's going to offend. So if you want to become a worldwide entertainer, unless you perform live, you are going to have to censor your music tracks. There's no way around it. And by legalizing the word, like you're legalizing marijuana, it's not going to make a difference. They're still going to pe find you're still going to find people who do who are offended by the word, and it's going to be a certain generation, maybe people of spices generation and um, popcorn and all that. The younger generation, they're probably so used to the word. But they should know that if somebody said to them, your, your bomba clutch, your mother this and your mama bomba ass, or your pussy clutch, you know, they're going to be offended. They're going to say, what did you say? Don't talk like that about my mother. Don't talk about that like my sister. Don't talk about that like that about my man. That's what they're going to say. How dare you? So if that's how they're going to react... If somebody uses that word against them and not in a song where, you know, I don't know what, that, what in what context they want to say it in a song. So why should that word be legalized? It'd be, you know, if we'd grown up with the word and, you know, the parents or the grandparents were saying, I'll change that bomba clata and get a clean one. And then as you grew up, generations and generations were using it all the time as, as opposed to sanitary towel or something else. They were just using that word. But it wasn't used willy-nilly. And the thing is, even now it's not used in that context. It's used to cuss people and put them down and belittle them and make them feel small. Comparing people to a sanitary towel, a soil sanitary towel. And would Belgium be happy to know that their nightclub is being named after a soil sanitary towel? But they probably didn't do their homework. Anything you see black people, especially black people in Jamaica, anything people in Jamaica do, these people jump on the bandwagon and think it's something great. And you get these little white people, some of them, bomba clap, bomba clap, bomba clap. They think it's something great. They think, you know, no kind of, you know. They just use words indiscriminately. They don't know what they mean. And I remember one girl, I think she must have picked it up from school. And she came home, you know, my mother said, don't you ever say that word in this house again. Oh, they were saying it at school, mum. They were saying, nah, nah, they were saying it at school. But people say these words and they don't know the boundaries. They don't know who to say it to. And it's different if you're talking about it in a different context and you might be just talking about, I don't know, to describe something. I don't know. People just use it. They just fall back on that word. I think maybe not an insufficient vocabulary, but, you know, Jamaicans are quite creative. So there may be insufficient vocabulary for them to find other words that can replace that word. That word seems to cover, you know, a multitude of sins. But the fact of the matter is, is that for many, it's, it's offensive. And I'm not quite sure if they're saying that by legalising it, you could actually go up to Andrew Holness and say, well, I want a bomba clot. I want a bomba clot, you know. I'm going to see if I'm this morning. Or they can go to the auntie or there, whoever. And say, what a bomba clot. Because that is what they're saying. They're saying that, and I don't, it's not even, what does it mean? Do they actually question what the word means? They're saying it's cultural, it's, it's historical. And when you're thinking about its history, why would you want to use it in the context as a greeting? You're greeting somebody. What is that? If you're talking about, if you're relating it, if you're referring to your history and your culture, and then you're using that word, how does it, how does the two tarry? 
I don't understand the relevance or, you know, the context. I mean, if you're talking about it in context, it's different, but people aren't talking about it in context and they can use it in a kind of a, a brotherly way, a loving way, and they can also use it to curse, depending on the intonation, depending on who they're saying it to, depending on understanding of that individual. But the same word that you can use to lift up, uplift somebody, you can also offend and put down somebody. So you have to be very, very careful because otherwise we can become very, very selfish. And we can reach a stage where we want everybody to accept what we want. And it's like, you know, recently we've had um, children in schools being forced to learn about LGBT and they don't have a say. We have people who are forced to accept same-sex lifestyles or alternative lifestyles, and they don't have a say. And so it's almost like people don't have a say. If they want to say something, they want to do something, they want to be something, all they've got to do is pass a law and everybody's got to take that on. Everybody's got to accept it. And it's not fair. It's not fair. So I can understand, you know, if you want to use it in your songs and you can use it in your songs, you have edited and you have un you have what they call raw or uncut or uncensored. It, I don't see how it inhibits anyone, but it should not be made legal. I don't think it should be made legal. You know, we under, you know, a woman's private parts is her sanctuary and it should be respected and that is where we bring forth life and if you have a protection something to protect those moments when she is having her body cleaned out and then you then inflict that that moment or that period that is quite private for a woman and curse men with it and curse all and sundry with it. What do you get out of that? How do you benefit from that assault? And that's what you want to legalise. I'm sorry, I don't agree. I don't agree. I think, you know, we should really think about what we're asking um, our lawmakers to endorse. I think we have to think you know, out of the box. I think we have to stop being selfish and stop only thinking about ourselves and stop, you know, and if we want to refer to history, I think we have to put things in context. Um, let me see, I think I wrote down a few notes. Let me see if I remembered everything. Yeah, I was also, yeah, I, w I was thinking about, you know, like in those dance hall clubs, you know, I remember seeing women, I don't think they do it now, but they were setting their tuntun on fire. I mean, and or some of them, they spread out their legs and they want you to put money in there and they're winding up and gyrating and simulating sex and jumping from some building and dropping on top of a woman. And then they're using, they're simulating aggressive sex um, moves on the woman. And they're whining up and they're bending up and they're doing all sorts. Why do you want to normalise that behaviour? Do you know it's like Sodom and Gomorrah for Christ's sake? You know, we have to know our limitations. We need to have self-respect. You know, but there doesn't seem to be any self-respect. People are going out, exposing themselves. And I probably sound like a bloody prude. But, you know, if you if you just if you are on show and you just don't have no self-restraint, no self-control, nothing. You know, what is the function of you as a human being? The function of us as human beings is to be focused, is to be dis disciplined, self-disciplined, is to behave in an orderly way. Anyone can do whatever they want. Anyone. But do you know how hard it is to discipline yourself, 
to control yourself from doing things that you'd like to do, but you know at the back of your mind, it's not really, it would, it's not really nice for you to do, or it would offend someone or, or something like that. So you restrain yourself and you hold yourself back. It's like, you know, people who talk and they say things and they say, once it's gone out, you can't take it back. So sometimes, you know, you, you end up feeling sorry and apologetic, but we don't want to reach the stage where we we're unforgiving, where we don't care about another human being, where we just want to impose our lifestyle on others. It's already happening, so we're not we're not far wrong, but I think the majority of us who can do something to make life a little bit more tolerant, tolerable for the majority, and not just because people have money, should they be able to have the power to do just what they want. I think, you know, other people need to be taken into consideration. I think that is all for now. Um, and thank you for listening. And I wonder if you agree. I'm sure I'll get plenty of comments. Bye-bye.